Hello, in this episode, we are going to use autoencoder to do credit card fraud detection. And um, again, to um, remind you, we are going to use just the normal transactions to train, in this case, an autoencoder to recreate um, the normal transactions. And then we use a test data to feed it into the trained autoencoder and recreate the original transaction, compare the differences. If the difference is large, it's likely to be a uh, fraudulent or normally um, fraudulent transactions. But similar as PCA method, but we are using an autoencoder instead. And so the original data is here. Here's an encoder sending the original data transaction to a bottleneck and then a decoder from the bottleneck to the original transaction. So we create a low dimensional approximation of the original transaction. Um, take the difference. If the difference is large, um, then that means that this uh, normal transaction trained encoder is doing a poor job in recreating, which is likely that because it's a fraudulent data. So this is the main idea of using an autoencoder in credit card fraud detection. So um, uh, since we have already done this credit card fraud data loading part, so I'm just gonna be quick. It's large, so I think it's better to upload it on Google Drive and read it from Google Drive to, um, to the computer and Google Colab. And then we did in Panda Data Frame, I name it DF. And then again, the train data uses only normal transaction class zero, okay, and then drop the class from the X variable. And then in the test data, you can put the Y variable, Y test the class, and then drop the class in the X variable when you test them. You scale it with the training data mean and standard deviation and convert to NumPy. We have done all the step and check the mean is uh, zero, standard deviation is one for the train and test data. Okay, so now start the um, fraud detection. So we're gonna use the TensorFlow Keras neural networks. And here um, we're using a batch of 100. The original dimension is 29, as we explained in the earlier episode. We're gonna use latent dimension of five okay, instead of two. And we have two intermediate layers, node 20 and node 10. All right. So let's see, here is a functional API method of implementing autoencoder. You get an input of an original dimension, 29 nodes, and then send that X to a hyperbolic tangent layer activation of dimension one, 20, and then to dimension two, 10, okay? and then to the latent dimension here, yeah, which is five, five nodes. So at the bottleneck is five nodes. Then let's call it encoder, the model. Take the X and then outputs a Z. Okay. And you can use the summary um, command to see how your node look like 29 to 20 to 10 to 5. Right. The decoder is that it takes that latent image, so 5 node, and then um, goes to 10 node, 20 node, and then the original 29. Again, the decoder is here. So now the um, uh, autoencoder um, uh, is the whole thing, which is the decoder of the encoder of the image, original image. So the output combined is the reconstructed image. Let's train a neural network. Keep remember that we're only going to use the normal transaction and autoencoder feeds the X train as input and the target output is also X train. So let's do that. Okay. Well, it's going to take a while. Let's come back when we're done. Okay, it's done training, all 50 parks. Uh, let's see the reconstruction error. So autoencoder predict and then the X test, that's our prediction. Compare it against the mean square error of X test and predictions, okay. get the MSE and um, combine um, the truth class Y test and the MSE um, in a data frame called error data frame DF. Um, you can look at the summary statistics of the all sample true class normal and true class fraud. And what you'll see is that uh, the reconstruction error of the mean is 0.61 for the normal sample, but it is 24 for the fraudulent sample. So again, 
the large mean square error is likely to be a fraudulent term. So you can tag it and you can do a post analysis like looking at the scatter plots. We did it before in the um, I know, uh, PCA an uh, anomaly detection. You can also compute a confusion matrix for it or compute the ROC curve, which we did before. It's the same as using a different mean square error from all to and they all look uh, greatly performed. So this was about how to do credit card fraud detection using an autoencoder. So thank you for watching this episode.